morning again, everybody, and welcome to the Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce and today's webinar on individual and team coaching, building human resilience by unlocking existing resources. I'm Narinda Multani. I'm account manager here at the Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce. Uh, today, my member Felicity Gasparro of Oyster Outcomes will be delivering today's webinar, which is being recorded and is available to listen to again by our chamber and library. So we've got a webinar library on the chamber website, so you can actually listen to um, this webinar again and also um, share the link amongst your network. Um, so yes, if you have any questions for Felicity, please post them in the chat box and Felicity will be um, answering those towards the end of the session. Um, so yeah, any questions, please do post them in the chat box. Uh, and they'll be answered later. Okay, so I'm going to now hand you over to Felicity to introduce herself and commence with today's webinar. So, thank you. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for joining on such a wet and horrible day. Um, uh, uh, this morning. Um, hopefully we will have an hour together where we can um, just spend a, a peaceful hour just looking at some of the strategies that might be available to you during COVID-19. Um, Narinda, if we could just um, go to the rainbow slide, please. So before we start this morning session, I just wanted to take a moment to recognise the fact that as humans living through possibly one of the largest health crises in our lifetime, we can't help but have been affected by COVID-19. Whether this is through the loss of illness or a loved one, through the work we do or the restrictions that have been placed on us on our normal way of living, we can't help have been affected. I think it's important to state up front today that today's session is supportive and forward-looking and aims to make the most of the situation we find ourselves in. My goal is to give you an hour just to stop, breathe, think and learn so you can take something constructive and practical back to your workplace um, and to the ambiguity we all continue to work with. Okay, Narinda, if you could go to the slide which shows all the coaches, please. So just introductions up front. I'm Felicity Gasparo and I'm one of the owners of Oyster. I am the owner of Oyster Outcomes, which is a maturing business. We're just over 15 months old now and growing, which is which is great in the current climate. Um, we've been member of the chamber for nearly a year. Um, the business to date has fallen into three broad brackets. So we've got a consulting arm, a governance um, and assurance arm and coaching. And it's coaching that I'm really here to talk to you about today. Day. Um, we've chosen to lo also launch our fourth service today, which I will come on to um, discuss at the end of the webinar. So, so hold on to your seats because um, there's a little treat in store for you. Um, I've been a coach since about 2008, when my employer at the time, Waitrose Limited, paid for myself and a number of, co uh, number of colleagues to train as coaches. Um, the idea at this time was to establish an internal pool of coaches who could work with people uh, from around the organisation, provide Providing them with coaching which would help them improve an aspect or aspects of their working lives and this in turn would improve improved performance and therefore that was where the investment in the training was paid back. Having seen this for my first, for, for first, ha having seen this myself firsthand, um, and for the others I work with, the power delivered by high quality coaching. I know, I, went, I knew when I set up Oyster Outcomes last year that delivering a coaching service would be important and value adding. So during the last 15 months, 12 talented coaches, many of whom I've worked with before, but some of whom are uh, new relationships, um, built the Oyster Outcomes Coaching Associate Service and it's been a very collaborative um, experience so we've worked together to to create what we've got and we're really proud of it and so happy to be sharing that with you today um, details of how you can access all of these lovely people um, via the oyster outcomes um, website will land at the end of the webinar and will be circulated by narinda as well um, and yeah as i said you can find more on our website 
So our coaching philosophy, um, our coaching focuses on enhancing performance at work. So it's not life coaching. It's very much focused about coaching in the workplace. We know it's not possible to separate out work from home. Um, so and, and, and when you start coaching with somebody, you, you're coaching the whole person. Um, so changes can be seen um, at home, probably as well as at work. Um, but our emphasis is definitely on coaching people in the work work focused situations. There are several main co coaching accreditation bodies um, and we, fit, we feel give this validation from intern the internal coaching federation sits best along Oyster's motivation for offering coaching to our clients. Um, as a business which prides itself on giving extra value to its clients, we know how important benefits re realisation is. We also know the UK, as long as along with the rest of the world, attempts to power through choppy seas, just how important a really effective workforce is. Narinda, if you could flip to the next slide, please. Oyster Outcomes offers one-to-one -one coaching, team coaching, coaching supervision, and mentoring to a range of clients, which span sectors and industries. If you're new to coaching, welcome and enjoy. If you're an experienced coach or coaching client, hope you learn something new or brush up on something that you've that you already know and for everyone i really hope you enjoy an hour of being in the coaching space just focusing away from the current situation and taking back ideas to the current challenges and i should state up front as well this is a safe and non-judgmental space for you so if you do have any questions feel free to ask away and we hope to have some time at the end to respond okay moving on to the next slide then narinda please um, we'll focus the rest of today's so session on taking you through some neuro-linguistic programming or NLP pro models, which are intended to get you thinking about how coaching can add value for you or your organisation. For those not familiar, NLP is a theory created by the work of two Californian scientists called Richard Bandler and John Grinder. NLP connects the brain with the language, with language, so verbal and nonverbal, and behavioural patterns. It's used by coaches to enable clients to make changes to the way things are currently viewed by themselves or by others, or to the way they see and therefore navigate the world. NLP plays out in words and pictures, verbal and nonverbal behaviours, and that's why I really like it. Being a very visual person myself, this is a really effective model um, um, the, that's worked with me as a client. Um, the NLP techniques we've picked out to share today, we think will help you tap into your own resourcefulness with the goal of building resilience, um, which will in turn deliver you through this crisis, the COVID crisis in good shape. We're doing this to give you a flavour of what engaging in coaching with Oyster Outcomes might give you and all your workforce. NLP is just one of a myriad of theories or techniques our coaches can use, and they are very flexible and client-centric. I just chose NLP because uh, models because of their practical application. So before today's learning session starts, I'd just like you to consider for a moment how you're feeling and what you are thinking about your current work-life um, experience. If we could move to the next slide, please. Given the events of recent months, you could feel you're free falling or next you might feel you're cautious, unsure, settled, unsettled. Narinda, if you could move to the next slide, please. You think you've got it, but you're just not quite sure. And then the next slide, you might feel resilient, centered and in control. Whether the words um, you're, you're, that, that I've put down match one of your um, uh, you, what, uh, the way you're feeling, it doesn't actually matter. What does matter though, is that for NLP coaching to be effective, you need to have a degree of openness to unlocking your own self-awareness with a view to adapting your perspective in order to really, really benefit. So just to get us in the mood, Narinda is going to put up a poll now for you to take part in, just to tell us where you sit at the moment. So hopefully you can all see the poll. I can see it on my screen. If you could just, um, just tap into where you feel you are currently at the moment um, and then we will have a look at the results as we go. Narinda, how are we looking in terms of the post, the, the, the poll? 
Okay, so interesting. So we've got a couple of people who are really in free fall. That's interesting. Let's try and help you to just put calm and, and, and centre today. Um, we've got a few people who are cautious, so maybe not quite sure about what's happening next in the world, in the, in the world of work. And we've got some people who are centred and in control, and that's excellent, isn't it? That's really good to, at this point of ambiguity for people to be feeling centred and in control. Okay, if you continue, if you, if this, um, we'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to that at the end. Okay, so moving on to the resourceful state now then, please, Narinda. The first coaching model I'm going to share with you is the resourceful state. And this is based on the presupposition that we all have the resources within us to face any given situation, that we're hu resourceful human beings and we can respond, we can deal with it, and um, that we can draw on previous examples of when everything ran smoothly and we achieved the success in our goals. A good coach will be able to work with you to frame your resourceful state. When our coaches enable their clients to untap their resourceful state, they're helping them to open up this belief that our clients are resourceful humans carrying within the answers. If these answers are stuck with the support of a professional coach, you may be unable to, you may be able to unlock what's stuck or challenging for you. The resourceful state isn't necessarily just self-speak. It can be physiological, multi-textural state, which if you develop over time can become incredibly useful strategy to deploy when you're heading into challenge. This is a tool you use when you know you are about to face a challenge. Um, so a presentation, perhaps returning to the office post COVID or a difficult meeting. So this is something that you consciously enter into before you go into challenge. And I just want to move on to the next slide, please, and share with you some of the examples of um, some people that we might be familiar with in their resourceful states. So first of all, we've We've got Jennifer Hudson, the amazing Jennifer Hudson, and you can see that she's got her arms outstretched wide and she's singing upwards as a talented singer to deliver the quality of performance that she does night after night, time after time. She absolutely has to draw on her resourceful state to exude that emotion and musicality to her audience. And she really looks like she's having fun. Greta Thunberg, so she's got a bit quiet recently, but anyway, she's still current. Um, so you know when Greta is in her um, resourceful state because she embraces the mic, she leans in and she has a little smile on her face, a wry smile. So when we see Greta doing this, she's starting to get on a roll and she's really landing her points. And she looks to me as though she's been asked a question that she's been desperate to answer um, and is delighting in responding. Hugh Edwards, who can't love Hugh Edwards? Um, and he has, uh, if you watch the 10 o'clock news as I do every evening, um, he has his, re his regular arm in across his body and his uh, other arm outstretched in the pose at the start of every news programme. And you'll notice how he struggles when he's doing an outdoor broadcast because he hasn't got his desk as a prop. Um, here though, he's really welcoming, assured and trustworthy. And then finally, my twin sons who are 10 and football mad would not forgive me if I didn't include um, Cristiano Ronaldo or a sports analogy. And he's, um, you can see here that he's about to take an awkward free kick. So it's, it's you know, all to play for. Um, what he does is he takes control of his breathing and he focuses his mind. He might even close his eyes for a minute or two. He pulls his shorts up to the middle of his thighs. I don't know if you've ever noticed that about Cristiano, if you've ever studied him. Um, and he drops his hands slightly outwards and his legs are anchored apart. So then he strikes a pose and he goes on to mainly score. Physiologically, these people and those around us have strategies in place to help them at their best in stressful situations. I'm sure you do too, but with the help of a coach, you can maybe bring this up into your conscious state and think about how, how you can apply it. So I'm just going to move on to the next slide now. Um, and this is um, a little exercise that I want us to, a small exercise that I want us to take part in. Um, and I'm going to try to help you create your resourceful state so you can draw on your personal resources when you next need, the, need them most. Um, we're going to do a short meditation exercise. In real time though, this is worthy of spending some quality time with a coach in developing today is just a taster. I invite you to put your trust in me and let's see where this take it, takes us. But if you are cautious, if you're concerned, if you're not feeling comfortable with doing it, then just take five minutes just to take a breather. 
Okay, so being able to draw on your own resourcefulness will help you to feel better and to perform well in your role in terms of uncertainty. Okay, for this exercise, we're going to focus on belly breathing. Focusing on the belly is an excellent way to cultivate a sense of being grounded. It is almost as though you're pulling your awareness deep into your body. So please take a moment to just settle yourself into a, seated, a, a sitting posture and close your eyes. Okay, place your attention on your abdomen at a point that readily stands out to you. As the abdomen rises, observe the moment from start to finish. As it falls, continue to simply observe. So just look at that rise and fall of your belly. Don't try to change or alter your breathing, just let it come naturally. Notice that if you've fallen into distraction or are starting to provide a commentary to the movements, this is a sign of success of your med meditation. Simply return to the non-judgmental present moment awareness of the rising and falling of your belly. I'd now invite you to call up a memory of when something went really well for you at work. I'm going to give you a couple of moments to do that. What were you doing? And who was with you? Where were you? To really enrich this picture, let's tap into all of your senses. What could you see? What could you hear? What did you feel? What could you smell? And what could you taste? Can you put yourself in that moment now and capture it? And just take a moment to enjoy it. You have the resources to be able to manage this current change and the crisis of COVID-19 and the impact on your working life. You've managed change before and you can do it again. Each time you return your attention, it is though you are lifting a weight and strengthening the muscle of your mind. You may find it helpful to label the movements, rising, falling, rising, falling silently in your mind for a while. Before opening your eyes, rest in the feelings of centeredness and calm for a few moments. Okay, you can now start to open your eyes. And once you're back in the room, please just take a few moments to jot down what you notice or what you experience during that session. And please capture what might be useful in the future. Okay, we're gonna move on now to a third NLP technique of anchoring. So anchoring is another way of deepening your own resilience through stressful situations, but in a more rapid time. Um, this is something you might use when you are actually in the moment of a stressful situation. It's not been planned. You just find all of a sudden you're there and a coach can help you create your NLP anchor. NLP describes anchoring as a simple way to allow you to change an unwanted feeling to a resourceful feeling in a matter of moments. When you create an NLP anchor, you set up a stimulus response pattern in your brain so you can feel the way you want to when you need to. So considering the levels of stress in our community and therefore stress in the present uh, today's present workforce, it's unsurprising that we're seeing on a virtual or physical basis this play out in ourselves or our colleagues in different ways. 
people who we know well can all of a sudden be displaying very different emotions or behaviours as we move towards the 1st of September aspirational work, return to workplace date fixed by the government, we may well see this accelerate. And as we move past that date with the removal of furlough support and so on and so forth and announcements of more redundancies and closures of, um, you know, certainly in the hospitality and retail sector, um, changes that will be undertaken in the public sector, we just don't know where we're heading. The NLP anchor is a way of helping you yourself at, or if you manage part of a team or you lead a workforce to stay connected to the core belief or purpose of the person, the organisation, and will stop the negative, unhelpful and overexcitable thoughts or messages from taking you away from that present position. The metaphorical anchor is a powerful tool bringing you back to the moment. So you can create your own anchor and it can be um, a character in your mind. It can be a visual image. Um, it can be a line from a song. So you're in the middle of a stressful situation. You call up that line from that really important song. Um, my personal anchor, um, when I'm in a stressful situation, I was once taught that there is um, uh, a, a, a stress, a pressure point here in, in your thumb. Um, and um, it connects with your stomach so I feel stress in my stomach so when I'm when I'm in the middle of a stressful situation I literally press gently into the palm of my thumb and release when I'm when I'm feeling under pressure and I can do that really discreetly I can have my hands down low under the desk or wherever nobody knows it's going on but by doing that it helps me just anchor myself and calm myself down and bring myself into the moment okay so the anchor um, is typically short sharp and snappy um, but working with a coach to create your anchor can be a really successful way of keeping impact of stress at bay now just moving on Narinda please um, I couldn't leave out grounding techniques now grounding is i suppose a spin-off of nlp but it's not strictly nlp um and it's but it's akin and um the principles of groundings again again are for use when you're under extreme stress um these techniques are, can be especially helpful if somebody is facing a situation which may tip them over the balances of their normally presented stuff self into something someone out of control um, and these are also used for example to help people suffering from PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder when a flashback occurs they can be handy just having your back pocket um, and if the floor starts moving your head starts spinning and your breathing starts to speed up or if you feel like you're frozen in motion grounding techniques can help it's used to help when you're experience like that fight or flight um, you're either going to stay in um, the situation and slug it out or you're going to let your nikes do the running as you head for that door the grounding with your five senses approach can be done again absolutely anywhere all you need to do is recognize when you are entering into this period of high stress and notice your own stress triggers and recall in any order your five senses and again working with a coach you could you you, you would be able to um, have a discussion where you might uncover what those stress triggers are um, to help you um, and so the five senses are um, I would I would I would work through this in probably uh, a couple of minutes um, so it would be tell me five things you can see so you look around and you pick up five things you can see so I can see my printer I can see my bed I can see my computer screen I can see a picture of my children I can see my cup of coffee four things I can feel so I can feel the palms of my hand I can feel my lap the top of my laptop I can feel my mouse I can feel my phone Three things I can hear. Well, I've got my noise cancelling headphones on today, uh, but if I was to take them off, I would be able to hear my children downstairs. I could hear a plane outside and I could hear the birds in the tree. Two things I could smell. I can smell my coffee and I can smell my own perfume. And one thing I can taste, I can taste my coffee. OK, so by going through that and, and really sort of linking in those um, those senses, those innate, sense, those innate senses to us, 
can really just help bring us back into the moment okay and by the time you reach the end of that process you should be in a calmer state if you're not then you go again you just repeat it doesn't matter by the way which order that you do these in so you might pick five things you can taste as a, you know it, does, it doesn't matter you just need to hold on to what those five senses are and then you should be able in the moment of stress to be able to deal with this okay so the final NLP technique I'm going to introduce to you, if we can move to the next slide, Narinda, is reframing. And this is a personal favourite of mine. Um, uh, it comes under the NLP banner of positioning, perceptual, perceptual positioning. Um, and it's the idea that you can re really refocus your brain on how it perceives the world by the words and actions you choose to take um, and again this can be a very very visual thing or it can be um, it, it can be something spoken and um, so it's it's something that's all around us and very a ready readily accessible so we're just going to move on to the next slide and I want you to see what you see and cap remember what you see what's the first thing you see when you look at this picture jot it down please so I'm sure that this will be familiar to anybody who's been within striking distance of a leadership or management development course in the past 20 years. But look again, what image do you see first? Well, I see a beautiful woman, okay? But some of you will have noticed the witch's crooked nose and a scarfed head first, right? So we're gonna do a, a second poll. Um, Narendra, if you could just bring up the second poll and um, delegates if you can please just fill in what did you see first a beautiful lady or a crooked witch okay let's see what the results are Oh, you all saw a beautiful lady. How positive. <laughs> okay, so um, this is just to demonstrate really that by, um, by slowing things down and paying proper attention to our worlds, we can notice things differently. We can notice more things than if we just take a glance. And this gives us a chance, therefore, to adjust how we are viewing, th to, to adjust how we're viewing things. And a coach can help you to create constructive images and disperse some of the negative pictures you might be seeing. So that's lovely that you all saw the beautiful lady i'm really impressed okay so just moving on to the next slide and again i'm sure that this is something that you've all seen if you're on linkedin you won't um you you uh you won't have failed to miss this, but there's a quote here, a famous quote from the um, from Sheryl Sandberg, who is the COO of Facebook, um, and she asks, she here is asking us to change the language we use around bossy little girls and reframe them as a person with leadership skills. Um, so this is a prime example of the way that words can change. And if you take that, if you extend that and think about the impact that that might have on the child, um, uh, instead of calling her bossy, calling her, I really respect your leadership skills. I really respect that you're being assertive. I really respect that you are, um, you know, you're telling me how, how, you're, how you're feeling um, and, and what you're thinking. Um, it, it changes the dialogue completely okay so rather than putting her down rather than putting her down we are um, embracing what the, the skills that she's got some of you might also be familiar with the growth mindset um, and this is again uh, based on some of the principles of NLP and and certainly it's something that I've seen within my children's schools of using the growth mindset which reverses the language of um, sort of scolding the child or um, telling the child they've got it wrong into well done I appreciate what I can see how hard you've worked on that how about you consider using this next time okay so the use of language and how we get our messages across with positive intent and that spirit of doing something because you really believe in it and it's coming from a really authentic place um, and um, uh, and we're approaching with positive Me uh, language people are much more likely to embed these messages as positive commands rather than negative commands and deliver the results that you're seeking so again just a top tip there but you can you can spend time again with one of your coaches and you can really sort of work on that if you if you tend to use the what um nlp would say is the away from language so the negative sort of you know this isn't working we need to fix it or oh my god we've got people coming back to work and we haven't sorted out the 
the, 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 the office. We don't know what the layout needs to be into. Um, we've got the answers. We just need to find them. Let's work through the plan slowly and work together to apply them. You've got two very different conversations going on. And by approaching things in the first, in the second way, you're telling yourself you can do it. You've got this, you can do it. Okay, so moving on now then, please. So summing up, we've covered a lot of ground in just 30 minutes. I have really rattled through um, some NLP techniques and hopefully some of them might be familiar to you, some of them might be new, um, but giving you a real flavour of, um, of one of the ways in which our coaches can work with you. Um, I wanted to talk, tell you the pathway towards um, uh, accessing our services. So Narendra, if you can go on to the next slide, please. Um, so we, um, so uh, there's more information under the coaching tab on my website, which includes profiles of all of our coaches. So if you want to go into the website and you pick one particular coach, tap on their image, you'll find some more information about them which we've created together. Um, so the first step is um, identifying a coaching need. So um, where you work in the workplace might impact on that. So you might be a manager of a team and you might see um, that you want to um, uh, put in place some coaching for one of your um, one of your uh, colleagues or one of your, 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 your team members, or it might be coaching for yourself or you might be the CEO of a com company and you might really benefit from having that individual external facilitative perspective on, on helping you to, to, to work this through. Um, so you identify the coaching or mentoring requirement and you also think about whether it's individual coaching or team coaching. So um, with team coaching is a real um, a growth area actually and something that we are again capable of doing so don't um so so, so bear, bear that in mind so you identify the coaching need you then contact me to discuss the coaching requirements so i'm if you like the the middle ground and i help to sort of listen to what you might want interpret what you might want and then i'll consider if you like from my 12 coaches who might be best place to help with the particular scenario um, and at the same time you can also look at the, the coaches and we can have a conversation about, about that. We identify two coaches um, and we offer two 30 minute chemistry sessions with those identified coaches um, and the client then uh, for the client and the client then decides who they want to work with um, and then basically the, the, the coaching starts. So um, the coach and the client enter into a confidential coaching arrangement and they, and they, and they start their work. So it's really quite simple. Um, as I say, I'm involved in the process to the point of handing over to um, the identified coach and then, it, and then the individual and the, and the, uh, is off um, and, uh, and accessing their coaching. Okay, if we can move on to the next slide, please, Narinda. So, um, as I said, we provide individual and team coaching, mentoring and coaching supervision. So even if your company has a coaching system in place, we can complement your coaches and provide supervision. And again, I think that's really, really important now. And um, the reason why I think that's even more important now is because I think that my, predi my prediction is that coaches will start to see more people come to them with some mental health challenges as opposed to um, work workplace based um, uh, scenarios and therefore might need to flag that they um, uh, the individual needs to be handed over into a different a different service okay so um, mental health awareness is really really important as we go through this um, but nonetheless we can uh, and, and coaching supervision can help us to define that so in that coaching supervision environment you can talk to one another you can bounce ideas off one another and then you can help to sort of signpost where you might um, where you might um, uh, I'd signpost for your client and packages can be um, really tailored to suit your specific needs so broadly speaking and I say broadly speaking because this is just you know we have to start somewhere um, uh, individual coaching can be delivered in packages of six nine or 12 sessions um, they're typically an hour in length um, as things stand and they are delivered by video 
um, video conferencing or if the individual prefers by telephone. Some people don't want to be face to face, some people want to be um, sort of just have that call down the phone. And we found actually our coaches that deliver telephone coaching, we found that um, some of the results are even more effective than face to face coaching because that um, the coach and the client are really just focused in on that they're they're not distracted by each other's body language or what else might be going on around them so um, if you have any concerns about coaching online or coaching via phone then I can tell you that it is not um, an issue in fact it could be of benefit um, all of our coaches subscribe to the ICF's code of ethics which we covered at the start of the, of the presentation they're fully qualified and they're working towards or have attained accreditation with one of the four main coaching bodies of excellence Okay, so just to reassure you, we are um, we are really well set up to be able to offer you coaching. Now, I, I mentioned at the start of the presentation that we had a treat in store for you in that we were going to launch to you today our fourth service offer. So Narinda, if you could just click onto the next slide, please. Um, we want to share with you some exciting news that today we are launching our online mental health first aid training. We've agreed a special discount for chamber members of 10% for course places taken in September and October. And you can choose, there's two courses that we can offer to deliver online. The first is a half day awareness course. So if you think that um, you want to improve awareness around mental health in your organisation or with your team, there's a half day course that can be um, that can be signed up to and we can also deliver the two-day mental health first aid um, aid course online now this um, pre-covid was delivered uh, over two days face to, in a face-to-face -face classroom environment the way that it's now delivered via zoom is in four modules broadly broadly speaking, broken into sort of two hours, um, but they do vary slightly. Um, we deliver them over a two week period. So let's say, for example, you would say deliver them on a Tuesday, Thursday, and then a Tuesday and a Thursday. And there's, a, there's an expectation of about seven hours of learning in between those sessions. So, um, so they're really, really good. They're very easy to access. Um, and um, once that person has completed that online course, they are available, um, they are a certified um, qualified mental health first aider okay and that's really important we know that mental health first aid England have an aspiration for one in ten of the population to be trained in mental health first aid um, and the premise of in case you're not aware of mental health first aid is that it is early intervention so you spot the signs earlier to somebody under pressure the first aider goes in they talk and hopefully they're able to just pick it up and resolve Solve it straight away or they might be able to suggest some avenues that the individual might um, might explore um, so early intervention here is the absolute key um, details can be found um, details of the 10% discount will be a uh, available on the member portal or you can contact me directly um, so although mental health first aid and coaching are two separate disciplines they do follow the common theme of the working well which is now more than important than ever and that's something I am particularly passionate about we want a well workforce if we have a well workforce then of course we're going to be able to deliver more so um, a few stats for you that you might not be aware of did you know that one in four of us will expect we're experience a mental health issue in any given year and I strongly suspect that that figure will rise with COVID with the, it, the impact of COVID. Um, you're more likely to meet someone in a mental health um, having mental health issue than you are having a heart attack. That's shocking isn't it? So we all would want to think that we know what to do if somebody's having a heart attack um, or we'd ring 999 and we'd get advice on what to do if somebody's having a heart attack. But that you meet somebody having a mental health issue um, more frequently, that's quite, st that's quite, um, quite um, uh, thought provoking, I think. 75% um, of people with diagnosable mental health issue receive no treatment at all. Um, so, um, so there's a good 
a good proportion of people out there who are receiving no no treatment whatsoever. Mental health issues account for almost 70 million days of sick leave per, per year. Um, and this is the most of any health condition. It's overtaken bad backs um, and back, yeah, bad backs as, a, as being a cause of, of sickness. And mental ill health costs the UK employees, uh, in, employers an estimated 26 billion, which equates to an average of over 1,000 pounds per employee. Okay, moving on then, um, just to recap, um, we, uh, we've covered what is NLP, how NLP can be used in conjunction with coaching in the workforce to reintegrate a new normal and constructive strategies which allow them to work in a calm and focused way through the next phase of the pandemic. We've looked at the resourceful state, um, hopefully we've enjoyed some meditation, we've discussed anchoring, grounding and reframing and we've also introduced you to our mental health first aid offer. I know there's a lot to absorb here but um, uh, of what we can offer in terms of coaching and how this might help the people in your organisation right now. Coaching, coaching supervision, mentoring, mental health first aid are very very broad su subjects which pull from certainly the coaching elements pull from a range of different theories, models, disciplines and approaches. Quality professional coaching and excellent mental health first aid training are worth exploring carefully and not every coach or mental health first aid instructor out there has these capabilities but I can tell you that the oyster outcomes people do. A resourceful coach will be capable of drawing on their knowledge and expertise in a client-centric way. A talented mental health first aid instructor will be able to guide their people, um, their, their, their learners through some incredibly challenging topics to enable them to step in at an early stage and help someone, help, help someone who's experiencing a mental health issue. Finally, I'd invite you to refer back to the answer, uh, to your answer to the first poll, which I asked you to think about how you're feeling about your working life right now. And just notice for yourself, there's no poll here, um, but just notice for yourself through the process of this last sort of 45 minutes, whether there's been any change. Okay. Our next slide shows our contact details, which of course you will um, you will receive um, when the pack is sent out. Um, and I just now want to move on to the final slide, which is any questions? Over to Narinda. Excellent. Thank you so much, Felicity, for educating us today on individual and team coaching. So your webinar has been very interesting and engaging. Um, so thank you very much. Um, any questions for Felicity? Please do post them in the chat box. Um, I'll probably start off. So um, Felicity, so with um, COVID-19, people are going to feel cautious. And the common question now is how to stay safe at work during this pandemic. So for companies, do you believe um, it's become a greater responsibility in ensuring employees' health and well-being is looked at? So I think the responsibility has always been there, but I think the awareness of the responsibility is greater. Great. So yeah, COVID has um, ripped the plaster off a number of things that have been bubbling under for um, a, a, a number of years. And yes, I think that um, my prediction, and again, I'm not in the government, thankfully, at the moment. Um, uh, but my prediction is that this will become more of an issue for organisations to consider. Um, there is talk, and again, I can't, um, I can't commit that this will happen, but there is talk from Mental Health First Aid England that they are putting pressure on the government to actually legislate that um, Mental Health First Aid, for example, is put in place in companies of a certain size. So, um, and, that, and that that is um, a proportionate to to um to to the people a uh, number of people working in the organization um so yeah so i mean i think a lot of it as well is down to the companies themselves and the leaders of those companies the owners of those organizations um but my personal belief is the more you can do around health and well-being um, and also getting people in the in the right space to be able to take on these challenges so that real core resilience and the belief around with their own res resourcefulness and and ability to take um, take forward 
the company mission, even in these challenging times, I think the responsibility is in part on the employer. But I do also think that there's a responsibility on the individual. So I think that we need to be better at flagging and saying, hang on a sec, I need something here, I need some help before we get to the point where we're off sick. Because once you're off sick, um, then you know we all know it's much much more difficult to get back to work and resolve the problem so yeah i would say that yes the responsibility has increased for um, employers but i also would say that the responsibility has increased for the employer employee the individual okay great thank you very much felicity um any questions was there anything that we talked about here that sort of touched um, uh, touched a nerve or just, I don't know, something that made you think, hang on a sec, I think that would be really useful or I don't agree with. Um, I'd be really interested to hear your, hear your thoughts. Okay, we've got um, a question here. Is the mental health first aid training aimed at everyone in the workplace? That's a really great question. Thanks for that one. Yes, it, it absolutely is. So CEO down to, um, a, a, you know, throughout. So CEO, administrator, leader, team manager, um, who, whoever, anybody can attend this this training. Um, and we would encourage actually a depth and breadth of training across an organisation, depending on the size. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Okay, excellent. Um, so please do also link with Felicity on LinkedIn. So she is on LinkedIn. Felicity, do you want to just share your LinkedIn? Yep. Um, I'm not sure if it's on my previous slide, actually. Um, Let's have a look. Let's go back. Um, it's not on my previous slide, but if you go to my website, it is there. So you can link, you can, you can tap through to the Oyster Outcomes LinkedIn page via, um, via the website, or just drop me a line and I'll send you my LinkedIn details. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm just going to move over to um, a couple of chamber slides. And if you do have any questions, just post them through in the chat box. Um, and then you've got Felicity's contact details there as well that she's shared. Um, I'll put, show them again towards the end of this presentation. Um, so please do send her any um, any questions or any queries that you may have. Um, so the ten percent offer that Felicity has mentioned is going to be on the chamber website under the member to member offer section. So there's a dedicated web page for this, so you can view that offer um, through the the chamber website. And also um, Felicity maybe consider putting it on LinkedIn and tagging the chamber into it, so we can share that further. So that's great. Okay. So this is a chamber slide. So it shows how each tier is designed to attract a business depending on the level of exposure you wish to gain as well as savings that can be made. So these are the different membership tiers. You can choose the one that you think would be um, relevant to your business and, and, and choose which um, level of exposure you require. So um, details can be found, further details on the Chamber website, it's just there at the bottom, Um If you're a non-member then you can contact me for more questions and also if you are a member then you can also contact me and I can put you in contact with your account manager. Okay, uh, here's my contact details, if you've got any queries, and here is Felicity's email address once again. And don't forget to um, link with her on LinkedIn. So excellent. Felicity, I'd like to say thank you again for educating us today um, on, um, on your, the, the area of business that you specialize in. It's been very interesting and engaging uh, with the polls that you set up. Um, and yeah, thank you very much. Okay, I can't see any questions coming through, but I'm sure they will connect with you on LinkedIn. Have you thank got you anything much. else? Um, no, just, to say, just to say thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for facilitating. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I've on. just noticed that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, with more people working remotely, I'm conscious of new starters and induction for them. How do you think we could enhance an employee's understanding of their and their employer's responsibility around mental health? Okay, with more people working remotely, conscious of new starters and induction, how do you think we could enhance um, an employee's understanding of their and their 
employer's responsibility around mental health. Okay, I think this has to go to the core of your organisation, actually. So I think that um, you need to, it sounds as though that perhaps um, maybe there's a small gap in terms of the current corporate level of understanding of their and of employee employers responsibility around mental health and that that needs to be generated across the organization and then absolutely baked into the induction program um, I mean we can talk if you want to um, discuss this and I offer a 90 minute free consultation um, just to have a conversation so I'm very happy to take this offline and sort of work out a bit of a plan um, but yeah I think it has to be resonant across your organization and then i think it has to be baked in to um any induction program that you offer so what you um do and what the individual needs to do around uh, around mental health um, and just as a quick example you might say you might make a statement for example to say that um you know uh we are supportive of uh of people experiencing mental health issues and we recognize that returning to work during or starting work with a new company during this period of time can be challenging um, we are here to listen and we're here to help you and we want to make this a, a positive experience so I suppose just by making it making it okay for the individual to flag that actually hang on a second I've joined you but I'm working remotely I haven't been into the office so I haven't physically met people this is difficult for me um, I think that's great and then you should pull through the individual um, uh, uh, to, 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 to really sort of um, uh, their responsibility for flagging that they have an issue okay great thank you so Alison Cripps um, thank you really informative thank you very much for listening Alison and to all the other um, delegates have joined that have joined us today so thank you very much okay um, so yep yeah, that's our contact details any questions just send us an email or give us a call okay thanks again Felicity thank you take care and you